Well, good morning and happy Sabbath. Are you ready for a long day? <laughs> well, by the grace of God, we'll be able to make it through. And it will be a blessing. And as we drive home later on, we can say that we have been with Jesus. So this morning, uh, as always, I have a simple presentation that would tell us what freedom is what freedom comes from, and what happens when freedom dies. So I'm gonna use my, my, my board here, and I, and I hope that as I write down, you can see it even from, from the back. And this is gonna be a simple lecture. Let's call it a lecture, okay? Right here we have God. Number one, God created man. Amen. All men were created by him equal. Amen. And we are endowed with certain rights given by God. Amen. So number two, is man. God made man, made it free, and everyone is equal, right? Number three, man created a constitution. And even though man is above the Constitution, man is governed by the Constitution. Okay? Number four. The Constitution created a government. Are you with me so far? Oh, yeah. oh, good. So this is God, number one, man, number two, constitution, number three. And then government is the last one. It's number four. Okay? Not only God made man and made it equal, so everyone is equal, he gave us rights. So rights don't come from the government. Rights don't come from the Constitution either. Rights don't come from men either. They only come from God. And what kind of rights has God given us? It's an interesting word. Let me see if I, I'm running out of ink on this one. I'm sure you know it because it's in the Declaration of Independence. Can you pronounce that word? <laughs> there you go. It's not a common word, right? Means rights that God has given us. And that is in the Declaration of Independence. However, it's not there today. I'll show it to you in a minute. What is the meaning of this? What is this? Salim. That's right. They cannot be taken away. Because God, not man, not the Constitution, 
not the government, gave us rights. It's a lien. Let's say that you have a house. And I place a lien on your house. I have a higher claim on that property than the owner. Right? So no one, no government, has the right to take away God's right. And that's the way it was for many years. However, after the Civil War, there was a little change. Just one letter in the word. They got rid of the U. And now is an I. And it changed the meaning of the word. Now it's not a God-given right. Now it's a government privilege. Let me read to you the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment, for the most part, was a good amendment. Because it made the black people citizens of America. By the way, it was a Republican administration that did that. The only nation that had fought a war to abolish slavery has been this nation. No other nation in 6,000 years have abolished a slavery by fighting against it. And nowadays people say that America is a racist country. That shows you that they have no idea the history of this nation. That shows you that they are enemies of the nation. They might look American, they might talk American, but they are not representing America. They are working for another power outside of America. Are you with me so far, friends? Because I, I know breakfast is doing his work here, but also here. So you need to have a clear mind. 400,000 men. 90% 90, 90 of them, white men, died to do for the black man what the black man could not do then. And they were all Republicans, by the way. I'm not pushing any agenda this morning. I'm not voting for anybody on November the 3rd. Are you with me? I'm running for the kingdom of heaven. That's the only kingdom I'm running for. I'm not a Republican because they are not Republicans anymore. They're rhinos. Rhino means Republican in name only. I wish they were Republicans. Amen. I'm not a Democrat either because they're not representing America anymore. I'm just a Bible-believing Christian by the grace of God saved every moment of the day. That's why I am, and I hope you are in that case as well. Let me read to you the 14th Amendment. It says, all person born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof as citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. So far, so good. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of the citizens of the United States. So now, instead of a you as an I, and what we have today are not rights, they are privileges. 
And as long as you and I behave, let's say you have a father. And father said, uh, son, if you behave this afternoon, you're going to go over to Freddy's house and you're going to play with him. But if you don't behave, you're not going. So what is the government saying to us is if you behave, you'll be fine. But we'll tell you what to do, what not to do from this point on. How do you call this kind of government? A republic. Okay? And let's, let's put a name on it. And a date. What country is that? What's, what year is that? That's when the founding father gave us a republic. So, and it's right there in the Declaration of Independence. It says, God made man, he made it equal. He has given us rights, and they're not gonna, they cannot be taken away by anybody. And government is there to be bounded by the Constitution. You know, Madison, he was the writer of the Constitution. By the way, he also was president after Jefferson. And he says, the government and a thief have two things in common. They like to take what they, it doesn't belong to them. And unless, unless we bound the government by the Constitution, he will become a thief. And he had a point there. A good one. Sadly, he, he has been forgotten. So the government was here for three reasons. To guarantee life, freedom, and the pursuit of happiness. That was it. Small government. Limited government. And limited by the powerful constitution. So the constitution says if you come to the U.S. or you're born here, the government will do all that he can do to make sure that you have a life. Number two, to make sure that you have freedom. And number three, to give you a chance to make it in life. We're not going to give you money. We're not going to give you land. If you work hard and you behave, you'll be fine. Okay? So with this in mind, let's go to the other side. I'm going to erase this word. Let me use another color. Here we have number one. Number one, what is it? Okay, now we're going to flip this over. Number two, we have a, a constitution. Number three, we have men. And guess who's number four? God. That's another way of government. And I have a, I'm going to put a name and a date on it. Talking about now the French Revolution. This government is going to be it. And then the government will make a law or laws, a constitution. And men will be ruled, not governed, by the government that made the constitution. And God. He's dead. 
He's God. We don't need him. How do you call that kind of government? I'm sorry for my writing. I should have been a doctor, perhaps. <laughs> How do you call that kind of government? Tyranny. In, in history, it has another name. The reign of terror. This is a republic. This is tyranny. But let, let us give it another name. Marxist, communist, Nazi. Socialist, progressive. He has many names. But this is the foundation of that kind of government. We don't need God. Men will be ruled, not governed. It's a difference there. By the laws that the government makes. When the French Revolution came about, and this is the year when it began, you know, July 14, this is July 4th. This is July 14, 1789. You know, they stormed a fortress, the Bastille. Is in the Oscars of Paris, and they took it over. And a year later, just to celebrate the liberty, they had a parade. And the people participating in the parade were naked to show that they were really free. Males and females. Because what the French Revolution offered was fraternity, equality, and liberty. Three things offer this kind of government. Life, freedom, and the pursuit of happiness. This one is fraternity. Let's have another name for it. Let's socialist. Equality, that means inclusion today, if you know what I mean, inclusion. And then liberty, not freedom. Those two words are different. Freedom comes from free from. It's good to be free from sin, yes. Liberty means you have the right to do whatever you want to do. By the way, liberty came from Liberta. Who was Liberta? She was the goddess of liberty in the Roman Empire. And she was also a, a lady, and on her head she had the sun. And there were rays coming out of her. And then also, she carried light. There you go, you follow, you got it. By the way, that statue was given to the U.S. by France. That's Liberta. And from Liberta comes liberty. Do whatever you want to do. There's no sense of responsibility. You just do it. Whatever you want to do. And Satan says, do as thou please. Hollywood says, follow your heart. That's the same idea. And Liberta came from Greece. With Helion means son, Christos means anointed. And it was a man in the Greek Empire, it was a woman in the Roman Empire. But it's representing Lucifer. 
because he was a barrier of light sometime in the past. That's why he carries a light. And also, Lucifer is the illuminated one, right? And the people that follow him are the illuminatis, or the illuminated ones. That all came out of what? Out of the French, the socialist, the communist, the Marxist revolution in 1789. Today, sadly, America is moving over this way. And because of that, freedom, not liberty, freedom will die. Because the only one that can set us free is God. And if you remove him, you are removing the rights and the freedoms that he has given us. What America will end up with will be fraternity, equality, LGBT, Q movement, whatever letter it is there. It's going to end up with a socialist government. The Constitution will be repudiated. You know that. What principles? Protestants and also Republican principles. So today we don't have a republic anymore. Today we have a democracy. Is democracy good or bad? In your opinion? It's pretty bad. Every democracy on planet Earth has ended in civil war. Anarchy. And you can see already anarchy taking place every single day in America, in the big cities of America. So we're here now. Right? We're on this side, this is gone. This is all history. That's where we are. And that's where we're going to remain for the amount of time that we have left. The good news, friends, is that we just have a few years left. I'm not setting a date. I have no idea the day, the month, or the year. But knowing Bible prophecy, and this is an awesome book, by the way. I hope you have a copy of it, and you get into it every single day. And you're putting this book in here, and then down practical living out of this book. So, we're heading for this, for tyranny. What party ruled Germany during World War II? Nazi party. What is the meaning of Nazi? That's an acronym. National Socialist Party of German Workers. So Hitler was not a right-wing man. At the presenting today in history, oh, he's, he's a right wing. Be careful with them. No, he was a left wing man. He was a socialist. Who was the first government or ruler that gave free health care to his people? Hitler did. In human history. To the Germans and the Aust Austrians. When, when he ran for president in Austria, by the way, he was born in Austria. He was German, you know, Austria and Germany, same people. Two countries, but same people. He won with 95% of the vote. And he offered to take care of them. He sure did. He says, don't worry. From the cradle to the grave, I will take care of you. And she, she, she did. A socialist. What party did Benito Mussolini belong to? 
He was a member of the Socialist Party in Italy. Another tyranny. How about Lenin, Stalin? Same. How about Mao Zedong in China? How about Castro in Cuba? How about North Korea? Cambodia with pot pots. How about Vietnam? They all came out of what? The French Revolution. Stalin killed at least 30 million people. A million every year that he was in power. And then he built the family for the price of the bullet that killed his family member. The 10 cents, because that's the price of a bullet, then says, you're going to pay for it. It's World War II. 70 million people died. Nazis. By the way, six, six millions were Sabbath keepers. So this kind of government is not good for Sabbath keepers. They hate Sabbath keepers because they believe in God. So friends, we're heading for persecution in America. By the way, it's already happening. It's, let me see if I can. It's, it's right here. Says California. Have you heard of California? It's a foreign country now, but, but it used to be part of the United States. Okay. Says California prosecutor threatens church with closure. Jail sentences for COVID 19 order violation. A prosecutor warned the pastor of a church in California that he, all his staff, members, and even visitors attending could face up to one year in prison if they continue to defy government COVID-19 orders by holding and attending in-person worship services. Is persecution already taking place in America? Pastor Che Ang, sounds like Asian, of Harvest Rock Church in Pasadena, I've been there, was sent a letter dated last Thursday from Chief Pasadena Assistant Prosec Prosecutor Michael Dunn, warning him of the consequences should his church continue to defy Governor Kevin Newsom's orders, prohibiting in-person worship in counties on the state's watch list. What happened to the First Amendment? God. Let me read to you what it says. This is Congress. Congress, a state, right? Government. Shall make no law. Zero. Respecting an establishment of religion. Or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So shutting down churches is not constitutional. And the First Amendment continues saying, and the right, the what? Right. The right of the people peacefully to assemble. So in California, the First Amendment for sure is destroyed. It's gone. Let me give you another case. Says LA County, you know Los Angeles? I call it Lost Angeles. <laughs> Seeking $20,000 in fine for church that opened amid COVID-19 restrictions. Los Angeles County is moving to hold a prominent mega church pastor in contempt of court 
after he hosted three indoor services Sunday. The church, I mean, the court is claiming that Grace Community Church, led by Pastor John MacArthur, should face $20,000 in fine. So no worship services or we're going to prosecute you and persecute you. We're going to take your money. Eventually we're going to take your property. Because we have already taken away your freedom. Friends, no wonder California is on fire. God's judgment are coming down, friends. Imagine 11, over 11,000 lightning strikes in California in just one day, causing more than 370 new fires in the Bay Area. That has never happened before. So if you ignore God and then you destroy the rights that he has given us out of mercy and love to wake some people up. Judgment will come. As you can see, the state of California, and I used to live there. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to be from. It used to be the golden state. Not anymore. Not anymore. The governor that they have was educated by Jesuit in Santa Clara University. You know where Santa Clara is in the Bay Area? Uh, let me read to you what he says. I'm, I'm, I'm not putting words in... If I can find it, <laughs> maybe not. I don't have it. I thought I did, but I don't find the quote. Perhaps I don't have it with me. But he says that I appreciate the education that I received by the Jesuits. They make me think against orthodoxy. What is orthodoxy? Right. It's a, a word that comes from Greek. It says right. Think it. The previous governor, Jerry Brown, he was a Jesuit priest. The previous governor, the straw man, you know his name. The one, the current one, Catholic. Jerry Brown, Catholic. Schwarzenegger, Catholic. The previous one, Greg Davis, Catholic. The previous one, Pitt Wilson, Catholic. No wonder, friends, that California is in the situation that is in. Yeah. So people are getting what they deserved. Five governors in a row, Republicans and Democrats, Catholics. And they follow the model of the French Revolution. That's why you had the people coming into the U.S. as immigrants, mostly from Catholic countries. Number one is Mexico. I'm talking about legal immigration. It's Mexico. Number two is Philippines. Number three, Central Americans. All Catholics. Number four, India. 
How Hindus? Muslims. Number four, China. Buddhist. No wonder that 84% of the new immigrants favored the Democratic Party. They come from Catholic countries or pagan countries and they have no idea about a republic. None whatsoever. What they believe is in a democracy. And a democracy, let me give an example. If you have two lions and then you have a, a sheep and they are going to vote on what to have for dinner. That's a democracy. You follow my, my, my reasoning? The, the majority won, right? Two to one, by far, landslide. They won. What happened to the sheep? It's dinner. That's a democracy. That's a democracy. That's why the founding fathers, following these discs, you know, this side or the board here, says Congress is going to be the main power in the nation, not the president, Congress. Because Congress people are elected by the people every three years. Number two, then you're going to have the presidency. But he will not be elected by the people. The election that is going to take place is going to be called the college electoral vote. Where every state, not just one or two or three, count. Just to give you an example, in the U.S., Right now we have that amount of counties. In the U.S. we have 3,141 counties. How many counties won Hillary Clinton four years ago? You have no idea. No, 57. She did better than that. How many counties won Trump? You just... 57 right here. Let me... Three thousand eighty-four counties. However, Hillary won the popular vote. But one point, no, 1.6 million votes. But she's not the president. Why not? Because of the electoral college. So the founding father says, we do not want a democracy. It's not good. All the states count at the time of the election. In New York, New York State, let me give you an example. Trump won 46 counties. Hillary won 16 counties. However, she won the state. Because the city of New York, she won over 2 million votes. More than Trump. So if the popular vote, vote would have been the way to select a president, she would have been the president. So, but she would have been the president because the people in New York City, a little tiny place, 319 square miles. That's New York City. 
would have governed three million eight hundred square miles. Wow. Would that be would that be good? Would that be fair? No. no. That's why the founding father says we want the president to be elected by every single state. Not the people. Congress, yes. The, the people elect the, peop the members of Congress, but, but not the president. No wonder today the left wants to do away with the electoral board. No wonder America, America is a magazine, is the official magazine of the Jesuits in America. America is calling to do away with the electoral vote. Because it's easy for them to control the people in the cities, mostly immigrants, mostly people that have no idea what this is all about. So it will be easy for them to elect or select the president. And I would not be surprised if eventually the electoral board is done away with. See, Donald Trump was not supposed to be the president, friends. They, they, they thought that they had it made in 2016. I mean, all the polls were saying, oh, Hillary is, is way ahead and she's going to win easily. Well, that did not happen. It's true, she won the popular vote, but 1.5 million more votes than Trump. But she did not win the electoral vote. If, if you see a map of the United States, the 2016 election, almost all of it, as far as counties, you know, dividing the, the country by counties, is red. Because America voted for him. America. The cities voted for her. America voted for him. And I'm not promoting Trump, friends. I'm, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Republican. We have counseled not to vote for people or parties. So on November 3rd, I'm not going to be in any polling place. I have a lot to do at home and so forth. So I'm, I'm not voting for Trump. I'm not voting for Biden either, by the way. Uh, because we have counseled not to do it. So I believe that God, that is almighty, that's sovereign, gave us a little time more. Maybe four years. I don't know if we're going to have another four years so we can get ready. And we can help other people get ready as well. See, Trump is a little stone in the shoes, if you know what I mean, for the new world order. He says, no, the future belongs to patriots, not globalists. And he said that in the United Nations. Says, I'm taking some of your money away because we are paying for you and then you're voting against us all the time. Well, good luck. I'm taking some of your money away. Who is the World Health Organization? And it has nothing to do with health. Yeah, it has to do with death, not health. Yeah. He said, no more money for you. He's saying, well, let's stop, let's stop illegal immigration. It's not good for a, for a nation to have all kinds of people coming in and, and, and when they come in, now they, they have all kinds of benefits and we cannot afford that. He's mm -hmm. telling the people it's okay to home school. Go ahead and do it. So he has done and he has said things that are not according to the new world government. That's why they're trying to kick him out. And they might. I don't know if God would allow him to, to remain as president or not. 
And if, even if he remains, eventually he might become one of them. I mean, all the way. He's already in some areas. But all the way. So to finish, because my time is already up. This is the beginning of America. And this will be the end of America. Freedom will die. It's already dying in America. Friends, by the grace of God, we'll be home soon. Every single day, every single day, we need to come to the cross and fall at the fruit of the cross. To be broken. So he can make us new. He can, he can make us as he is. Because no political party, no man, no institution, no government, no constitution, no man will save us. Only God will save us. God bless you as we may meditate on what we study this morning.